Before you walk away from this thing that I love, that I hope you fall in love with called project management, give me a chance to prevent you to stay. But I must warn you, work will be required. Family, we're just going to jump right into the points. Point number one, overcoming imposter syndrome as a project manager. I've made multiple episodes on this, but I know this is something that runs rapid, not just even in the profession of project management in any profession, because of the fact of that you are um, feeling that you're unqualified or unworthy. I normally see this a lot more, especially when someone obtains a certification because they have a mindset of what the expectations are, they ex ex the expectations with regards to being so high that they're like, I'm never going to achieve this. And then they start going backwards. You see, imposter syndrome can really truly emerge and, and really make you feel a certain way about how you're leading a project. And when that happens, it starts affecting a lot of other areas of your of your professional career with regards to leading projects. I see it time and time again. Matter of fact, to be very transparent with you, I experienced it. And that's why I can talk to it so well, because when I got certified, I felt like, okay, now I'm certified. Even though I've been leading projects, all of a sudden I felt like there was an extra weight on my shoulders or, or, or my back because of the fact now the expectation level, because now I'm PMP or now I'm CAPM certified has went up extremely high, but that was me setting those expectations. There wasn't the business. It wasn't the managers. It was myself. So be careful family with involving, or I should say becoming one. Ooh, I like that with imposter syndrome. Here's my actual advice. Document your achievements and review them periodically to build confidence. This is so important, especially if you haven't been in project management no longer than five years. You need proof. You need receipts. You need evidence that you can and have done this job. And not only done this job, you've done it well. Focus on continuously learning to reinforce your expertise. Remind yourself that growth is part of the process. That's another thing. Let me park here parenthetically, family. I get it. I really do. Because I've been there where you want to impress, or I should say, impress upon the organization that has made a decision to hire you. But they understand something you don't understand. You're like, well, what is that, ED? What they understand is it doesn't matter your experience. You still will need to understand how they do business, how they lead projects. And then you need to blend that in with the style of how you lead projects. So give yourself some grace. So I know you do it. I know you beat yourself up because I've done it. And I have more than a decade of experience. And I've done it throughout my career until I finally I got to a point where I was like, enough is enough already. Because I have to make that decision to say, you know what? This is, I'm growing in this role and I'm going to continue to grow. I'm still growing to, to, as we speak today. And my last and final step is, or actionable item, surround yourself with supportive network of peers and mentors who can offer you encouragement and validation of your capabilities. Family, I know you guys always hear me talking about mentorship or and networking. I'm going to take care of both of those for you so you don't have an excuse to not have a mentor. I'm going to take care of the network so you don't have an excuse not to have a network. But I'm only going to let a select a few in to start off because I want to see how it goes. But if you're interested, leave me a comment, say mentor. All right. Point number two, leading a meeting where you are at the least knowledgeable in the room. You know, one thing as a project manager, and this is not, this is, this is common, but a lot of project managers don't talk about this because they want to look astute or intelligent in front of you. Me, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you right up front. Hey, I don't understand this, but I'm willing to learn. I don't understand this. I start asking questions. Your job is to be a, a, a facilitator, point blank. You should be not intimidated because again, what if, 
What is the definition of a project? Let's just take the root word, unique, temporary. So you're not going to know anything. I don't care if you're the most IT savvy person in the world. If this project is not around your functionality within IT, if I'm talking servers and you know nothing about servers because I'm talking about because the project is based on cloud, these are two different things. Server and cloud is, is two different things. And I mean on-prem, on-premises or in the cloud. These are two different things. So give yourself again grace and understand when you are leading a meeting, you will be the least uh, knowledgeable in the room. But your ability to be the least knowledgeable in the room gives you your strength as well. Because it gives you your strength because it allows you to ask questions, to be curious. You know, I've even had it where you, you have some uh, IT technical resource and they'll start talking extremely technical. And I say, hey, that, that sounds great to somebody that can understand that. And I know you know your stuff because you wouldn't have been able to uh, deliver it to me like that. But could you break this down like if you was talking to your mom about what you do or your, your dad or your uncle or a family member? Matter of fact, talk to me like it was your child. See, a lot of project managers are nervous to feel like they're beneath or less than you. I have no problem saying when I don't know anything because I know I'm, I'm willing to learn it. Okay, let me get off my soapbox. Here's my actual advice. Focus on being a facilitator. Prepare by understanding the objectives of the meeting. Here's the key thing. Ask open-ended questions to guide discussion and summarize these key points for clarity. Avoid the pressure to know everything. Again, I'll repeat, avoid the pressure to know everything. Your role is to connect the dots, not to be technical. If your job was to be technical, they would have hired, you should have been the SME, the subject matter expert. If your job was to be technical, they would have hired a technical project manager. But most of the time when you have somebody that is a super technical, because I work with those super technical project manager, they have a tendency, no fault of their own, to want to do the work, but then they also have their work as well to, to, to work through. So again, give yourself some grace, give your, yourself some chance, uh, opportunity to learn and avoid that pressure that I know is building up every time you're leading a, a new project or even you're in a project and you feel like you're lost. Point number th three, addressing a lack of technical aptitude. Again, I'm gonna address this as, as well. Not being fully tech uh, savvy can be challenging project management, especially when you're dealing with software or tools. However, even though this can be challenging, you still have an opportunity to do something what most people won't do. And here's my actual advice. Identify the technology you struggle with and schedule dedicated time to learn it. Leverage online tutorials, ask a tech team for a brief training session or pair up with the tech savvy team member. That's what I do. If I don't understand something and I would, the person that I'm feel like, I'm asking questions and you're like, oh yeah, this person really knows their stuff. I'll schedule a one-on-one -on -one with them. Hey, listen, I want to get up to speed and understand the technology aspect of things. I'm going to come up. I, I don't, I'm not as smart as you when it comes to this. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to buy you lunch or whatever it's going to take so we can have that one-on-one -on -one conversation because I know that I'm borrowing your time that I can never give back to you. So if you don't mind, I would love for us just to have a technical discussion and I'm going to take notes and I'll send you the notes that we that I took so that your time wasn't wasted. If you're open to it, I would also like to record the call so if I'm ever stuck, I can go back and say, oh, well, that's what he meant when he said on-prem. Oh, that means the server is on-premises or in the cloud, which, which are you using, Azure or AWS? So again, pairing up with somebody that you deem and ask them to mentor you, if anything, hey, would you mind mentoring me on the technical as aspect of things? And again, show your willingness to learn and adapt, family. Point number four, feeling tolerated, and this is my favorite, and not celebrating. It can be demoted, demotivating when your efforts as a project manager go unnoticed. Everything, all the blame is placed on you and none of the recognition is seen by others who you're leading. Ooh, I like that. The reason why I like that family is because recognition, it, I don't care who you are. 
if someone came up and if we're on site and someone came up to you and said, Hey, Hey, Brian, I really want to let you know that I really appreciate the way that you're leading this project. We've had a couple of project managers that, that has tried to come in to break down the silos and create more of a collaborative type working environment. And I appreciate you for doing that. Tell me, how would you feel if an executive walked up and said that to you or your direct manager or a direct manager of someone else uh, from your project team or stakeholder? You would have a different thinking. You, your mindset would be totally different. Here's my actual advice. Seek feedback proactively from your team and stakeholders. Number two, highlight your accomplishments during reviews by showcasing how your actions possibly impacted project outcomes. Family, in your leading projects, I know a lot of times we want to be humble and there's a time to be humble. And then there's a time to say, hey, let me show you the impact that I've had. Let me show you the influence that I had. We were all in silos and then I was able to get teams that, that normally wouldn't even want to talk to each other and they're trying to solve things through email. Now we're collaborating and we're working through problems as a team instead of individuals. Use, use this as a platform to create a narrative of your value. Family, you are value. When you step into this thing that I love that I hope you fall in love with called project management, you are a leader. Your job is to inspire, influence, and also motivate that team to do better than what they thought they could do. Point number five, hand handling project team members who don't want to respond to emails after multiple follow-ups. Hey family, I've been there. Unresponsive team members can delay progress and hinder collaboration. You need to address this behavior early and often. This is what leads to project managers not wanting to be project managers no more. Looking at other fields because of the fact of is that the people that you're emailing do not report into you. You don't most of the time have direct reports as a project manager. And so you're emailing someone and you're asking them for something they made a commitment on. It wasn't like you made the commitment and said, hey, I'll have this done by X date. Or, And then what gets worse is when you send a reminder and then they still ignore you. And you're like, wait a minute. I'm trying to help you because I got to report up and you don't want to answer or respond to my emails or you act like you didn't see it. Okay. Here's my actual advice to address that. After the second follow-up, escalate them by calling them directly or setting up a brief meeting. Uh, if they do not, if, if they do not accept your call or if they do not respond to your meeting invite, I'm going to tell you right now, we're not going to play any games. We're going to get straight to it. First, CC their manager. If the manager doesn't jump in and find out, hey, what's going on, CC their manager, and you keep going up the chain until you can get a response. Be clear about the urgency and impact of this of their response as well. Reinforce communication protocols during team meetings to set expectations for a response. And that's another thing that that can cause you to not even, even want to do this this role as a project manager. But some of that accountability is on you because you didn't set the expectation. I always talk about lack of expectation creates frustration. So you need to set the expectation and say, hey, the expectation is, is when I send an email around a particular task item or whatever, my expectation is, is that you will respond within 24 hours. Does anyone have any objection to responding within 24 hours? If so, please let me know so we can address it. You have to be direct as a project manager or not, you will fall out of love with project management. All right, let's move on to point number six. Why it's important to call on individuals in a meeting when no one speaks up, basically. You know, family, I had to learn this the hard way. I was, a quick story. So I'm leading this project and we would have meetings, our weekly meetings, and we would get there and before the meeting, I would send out a request, hey, this, these are the things I'm looking to talk about. Could you guys add some more agenda points so we can have a really solid meeting? Nobody will respond. Okay. Next, next meeting, did the same thing. Nobody will respond. I said, okay, fine. When we came to the third meeting, everybody joined the call and I'm just sitting there and they're like, Edward, what are we talking about? 
you guys tell me. Every week, I've been sending out a request for us to have a conversation so I can understand the clarity of where we're at. Every week, I do not get engagement like I would expect. And I come up with the agenda based off of what I'm kind of seeing through emails or even looking at the schedule. And this is our meeting. This is not the, this is not my meeting. This is our meeting for us to address any risk or issues, to address where we're at from a, a strategy standpoint, where we're at from a schedule and uh, what else is going on within the project that you need assistance with. And do you know when I sent out the next agenda, I got a lot of responses back. But the point of it being why it aligns with what we're talking about here today is another one of the, the, the tips that I used, uh, that I actually still do today. And I, and the, the thing about this is you have to do it off and on because if you continually to do it, people are going to expect it. I like catching people off guard when it comes to when you're in a meeting and you're doing all the talking. So one of the things I do is maybe one meeting, I'll go around the room and I'll call everybody by name and say, hey, any questions, comments, feedback, or additional thoughts you would like to add to the conversation? If they don't say anything, no problem. And I'll just go around the room. And some days I won't do that. I'll just say, hey, thank you guys for coming out. Uh, if anything comes up, please feel free to reach out. And then they get comfortable. And you don't want your team members to get so comfortable that when you do call them, going into my actual advice, is you want to make sure when you're noticing that, that you want to have open-ended questions to create a prompt dis discussion. You want to be able to also acknowledge and appreciate their impact input to encourage others on the team. So when you, when you are basically acknowledging and appreciating them, I would sometimes, when I had meetings that were so boring and dull, and it was always one or two people speaking, I'll send out an email and I'll copy everybody that was in that meeting and I'll put those two people, hey, I really, truly appreciate you really making a commitment to show up to the meeting. And I'll copy their managers, all their managers on there. Because now I'm saying, what is saying to the manager, so is are you guys just going to his meeting and just sitting there? If that's the case, then maybe we need to get somebody else. So there's a lot of different tips and tricks that you could use to really get people to uh, participate in, in meetings. And again, rotate this approach to ensure everyone's perspective is heard. Point number seven, fighting off self-doubt. Message, if you're new to the episode, anytime that I say message, this is a point you wanna listen to. This is a point, if you're not driving, please take the time to hear all the words, every word that I say, because I definitely believe we all go through this. If you haven't, if you haven't had self-doubt, as a project manager, then that means you have not been through really doing project management. Leading a project that you have no skills can set or trigger self-doubt. Have I been there? Absolutely. And the reason why I've been there is because of the fact of facing tight, tight deadlines, deliverables being complex, or me not even understanding the deliverables, people resource constraints. And I'm creating all of these self-doubts. I'm creating like, man, I shouldn't do this. I should forget, you know, I'm done with, this is impossible. I don't even see who, how we're even gonna be able to get this project across. And then I, I catch myself and say, wait a minute, I got a team here. So we're gonna collaborate. We're gonna work together. We're going to figure out what we need to do to execute to make sure this project is a success. Here's my actual advice. Reflect on past successes again and write down the challenges you overcome. Remind yourself of the skills and expertise that got you to this point. And family, regular positive self-talk. I know sometimes it can be challenging to talk positive to yourself, especially when you're in the state of mind of your, you have self-doubt. But put on something that will trigger that, you know, a motivational video or read a motivational book just to get those, just to get that, you know, that habit. So you stop having these set negative self-talks with yourself because it's not doing you any good. It's actually making it worse. So what's better? Why don't you just go ahead and find a positive or motivational type video that you can listen to, to help and give you some type of encouragement. All right. Point number eight. Emphasizing the importance of leading people over mastering every detail. This is really to my new project managers when I say zero to five years. They have a tendency to feel like they got to know every detail. 
And I look at it, my, my analogy is you need to look at your project like you are the CEO without any direct reports. And CEOs, they don't know every minute details. They know the outcome. They know some of the challenges. They know how everything works, but they don't know the minutia. They don't know where, where Johnny didn't show up and we had to get Betty to come in to fill Johnny in. Ah, Betty's good, but Johnny is, it, he knows his product inside and out. So stop, uh, I, please, I, I'm begging you. Stop trying to master every aspect of the project, but effective project managers focus on leading their team and orchestrating the task. Here's my actual advice. Prioritize understanding team dynamics, motivation, and collaboration techniques. Delegate, I'll say that again, delegate the technical tasks and maintain a high level perspective to steer the project strategically. Here's my three transformational recommendations. If you stayed this long, truly appreciate you. Point number one, overcome your imposter syndrome again, family. Imposter syndrome can emerge because you feel unqualified, you feel unworthy, you maybe hit a roadblock and now you're confused on what you're going to do. Surround yourself with a supportive network, peers, mentor, people that believe in you is gonna be important. Point number two, emphasize the importance of leading over mastering every detail. Like I said, I know it's tempting to wanna to know everything about the project uh, from a technical, non-tech, that's not your role. Your role is to delegate those technical tasks. Your role is to maintain a high level perspective, but most of all, drive the outcome strategically in getting this project done within the triple constraints. Where is that quality, calls, scope, and time? All right, last and final one, fighting off self-doubt. Like I said, self-doubt can be triggered because you're managing to deadlines or you're managing to complex deliverables. It's crucial to stay focused, determined, and, convers and confidence. Here, confident, excuse me. Here's my actionable tip. I have to remind yourself of your skills and expertise. Number two, reflect on the past successes and write down how you've overcome them. Well, family, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I understand how, as a project manager, it can be challenging out there when you're trying to make that tough decision, should I stay or should I go? And I'm not talking about the organization. I'm just saying project management in general. I can't make you any promises, but I will tell you, if you make the decision, not the choice, to say, I'm going to stick it out and find a way, it may be the organization that you're working in. It may be you, but figure it out. Listen to today's episode over and over again. There's one or two, maybe three nuggets in there that applies to you that you could start implementing today. I'll give you tonight to think it over, but the, tomorrow I'm hoping that you take immediate action. I go by the name of ED for you smart and intelligent folks out there. That just simply means it. I appreciate you. Until next time.